Can you just get to pick three? Yeah, at yep. any three. Okay, I'm definitely Yeah, bards have amazing skills. Yeah, and then at level two or three, I think you get expertise in two of them. Okay, yeah, so I have deception, intimidation, performance, persuasion, and sleight of hand. Makes sense. Anyways, you, you are a sneaky that. fuck. <clears throat> and a mouthy fuck. All right, yeah, so we're going back to the yeah, warehouse. Are. So you like, look inside the warehouse. Okay, the warehouse is a <laughs> building that is private property. That's all right. <laughs> is there um, like a side entrance? Wait, before we do the warehouse, uh, Johnny, are you going to share with us the new moon thing? Yeah. Okay. So, I mean, it might be fair for us to assume that another act won't occur until the next new moon. That would is be a, a reasonable um, conclusion. And then I'm, I'm going to tell everybody about my ability to do oh god hang on I just need to pull up my character sheet again uh to cast uh what is I keep, spell? keep forgetting I could cast guidance just add a d4 to everything uh is that like an silent image? image yeah that's a cantrip that is awesome yeah it can uh, be so rolled before or after as well that I can cast silent image and basically create like a an object or basically create like an image of a woman then we can use that as bait if we want to is That's there a side cool. entrance to said warehouse uh there is a back entrance and a front entrance how All much right. sway does being a nobleman have i'm gonna go to the back entrance it generally can have a lot yeah generally speaking commoners will do what you tell them to do and other persons of significance will be inclined to do as you tell them um, and people of your level will treat you like an equal and tell you to piss off if they don't want to do what you want them to do what level nobility would you say squire is level three oh, squire is the lowest level of nobility you can be yeah. Okay, that's neat. That's Squire neat. is basically training to be a knight, and a knight is one of the lowest tiers. Um, but you can use your you can just use your house name to the advantage. Is the back door locked? Both doors are locked. I would like to attempt to pick lock the back door. Are there any windows? Out? I'm uncomfortable, but I like, feel you want to solve this murder. What? Yeah. I feel like I'm going to take a quick piss. Be right back. This is a very relatively small crime for something that is horribly disgusting. I yeah, use so... the fact that uh, summoning the dead is, or the the evil is greater than lock picking. You can definitely justify your act however you want. Um, did you pick a god, Owen? No, I had a question about that. I don't know what that means. Just picking a deity that you follow. Um, it's less significant in uh, 5e, and I'll have to learn more about how 5e works before I can make any judgments on it. But uh, I posted a couple of things uh, last night about my uh, world in 3.5, and it's much more detailed. But uh, basically, the god you worship is the god that grants you your supernatural abilities. I will look at them. 293 of the handbook. Might I pick lock said back door? Uh, yeah, you can try. Nice. Okay. Um, you start uh, fiddling with the lock and you can hear it like click and like a bolt drop and then you hear this blaring sound that is like deafening and high pitched like an alarm yeah oh shit boys go 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 <laughs> run an alarm <laughs> <laughs> fucking run who cares just run i'm just gonna walk away i wasn't part of this shit <laughs> uh, yeah okay oh, you uh casually oh, run saunter. corby run I'm back. Actually, backtrack. Well, not backtrack, but, you know, mid-stride. I'm going to 
Um, is there like more warehouses on the other side? Like the back end, like the back door is like, is there anything like further back? Like, is there like a back alley than like more buildings? No, these are up against the river. They're about um, 80, maybe 100 feet away from the river. Is there like any, because there are like trees and stuff or like bush? Uh, no, it's pretty uh, devegetated around here. This is the uh, old. There? This is the old part of the village, so there hasn't been any uh, any new growth here in years. Right. So there's no like bushes or anything like that. Uh, there we, would be like bushes, but there wouldn't be any like uh, are old we running trees or anything. Something? They're running well, from mean, the alarm. Just like, they just tripped. Yeah. What, I, I, as a wood elf, I can like I can, I can hide in like in foliage, like well. Okay. Well, you can run and jump in a bush if you want. What is creating it's the dead. noise? Um, you do not know, but it sounds like someone's put a blowhorn up to the door and turned it on high. Yeah, so I lockpicked uh, the door fairly adeptly, and then uh, <laughs> apparently we got alarms <laughs> in this day and age. Oh, sorry. I didn't mean to click that. You're banned. Okay, so what are you guys doing? Uh, the elf dives into a bush and disappears. And I'm hiding. And, uh, yeah, so, like, what I want to do is I want to wait and see if somebody comes. I'm, I'm going to follow, but uh, is the bush within 30 feet of where we opened the door? I'll say yeah. All right, I'll, I'll go to the same spot. I'm going to do a stealth check, and then if someone comes up, I'm going to attempt to do a minor illusion to make the sound of footsteps running in a different direction to lead them away from us. I'm going to okay, say... Okay, can that one do sounds? You cre yeah, I just, I just actually... Oh, nice. It. Yeah, I, I was just reading it. Image. Minor minor image in uh, in third edition doesn't have sound. Get, get your own fucking bush. Get... <laughs> okay, uh, so the two shady people jump into the shade. Uh, what do the two lawful good people do? I look at Steve. <laughs> we just We're just gonna it. walk away. Like <laughs> we didn't do any, have any act in this. Like before you guys even like realize what's happening, like I was like hiding. I'm just gonna I'm gonna go in the warehouse forward and then dip into the alley and I'm just like catch guard. Control. I'm just kidding. And I'm gonna wait and see who comes to investigate. Or if somebody comes like from the inside out. So you guys, Jory, you're going to get a guard? No, I'm going to go over, like past another warehouse and dip into that alley. Oh, okay. And uh, Steve, you're just going to saunter away? I'm gonna. I'm just going to walk in the street and look surprised and confused at this noise coming down the alley. Okay. Look roll, around. Roll a deception check. By. No. Yes. No, I won't. <laughs> <laughs> well, you can just do the classic guilty whistle hey, if you want. Girl. Okay, no, well, you very great. casually walk down the street. Um, after about a minute or so, uh, one of the uh, village constables uh, comes towards the the warehouse. Um, he circles around and uh, sees the door uh, just slightly ajar. Um, uh, real quick. So, are the bushes like to the south of the the warehouse? Yeah, to the south. And then he came from. Uh, he came from the road, which would be to the north, down one of the alleys. Okay, so he's on like the east or west side of it right now. He's on the back. He's V. He comes down this alley and goes to the back. He sees the door is ajar. He uh, pulls it shut. Is there another alley off to the right? Uh, yep. The next, there's an alley between uh, the next two buildings. So I'm gonna do. Hang on, let me minor... grab my sun. You're good. I'm gonna grab the sun just to light the whole area up because it's daylight now. Thank you. Another disadvantage of uh, what you call it is that I can't tell when it's dark and light because I can see everything. Yeah. We'll make sure to let you know. Uh, so on the, the right alley that he didn't come down from, I'm going to cast the minor illusion to create the sound of multiple footsteps. And uh, 
have somebody say in like a low deep voice like uh run it to the guards and have the sound of them running up the alley okay he takes off after them so what, what did he did he close the door and did the alarm turn off no the alarm stays on but he closes the door well, I was trying to do it before he kind of like got to the door to even did a chance to close it, so it would stay okay. open. Okay. Um, I'll get you to roll a uh, deck save. Yep. So the alarm is just blaring? Yeah, it just blares. Okay. Uh, you see him approach the door, and you cast your illusion, and he goes to reach for the door, and then yells halt, and runs off down the alley. I'm going to turn it on and say this might be our chance to look inside real quick. Boom! I'm fucking dashing up there. <laughs> <laughs> cover me. Cover me. Cover keep me. Watch. I'm going in. Yeah, yeah. Cover me. Keep watching. I'm going I'm I'm to keep, keep watch down the alleys. I'm going to run up to the door really quickly and then open the door really slowly. Like, not really. Not, like, painfully slowly, but carefully. Okay. You open the door and look inside and you can see rows and rows of uh, skids of sacks. The uh, aroma in the air leads you to believe that this is a spice warehouse. There's a, It's like a, an almost stomach-turning combination of like curry and salt and all kinds of different things. I actually worked in a spice factory. It's disgusting. Can uh, I'm going to... I'd be able to know where like the wall and kind of generally where that girl was murdered, right? Like... Yep. On the inside? Can I Here run I to where that is and take a look on the inside? Yep. Uh, yeah, there, there is a big uh, pallet of uh, flour in front of that wall. Like it's right pressed up against the wall? Yep. Is like Are they like a whole bunch of sacks of flour? Like I can't... Yeah, it's stacked like five feet high. Right. Could I move a couple sacks of flour just to see like anything on the wall like near the top? Yeah, you can shuffle it around if you want. Yeah, I'm gonna shuffle. I'm gonna shuffle a couple of them around. I'm not gonna be there forever. Okay, you pull a couple of the sacks off, and you can see the wall. It's got some uh, obvious white staining on it from the dust from the uh, flower sacks. Right, and that's it. Yep, there's nothing on the inside. Can I do a general perceiving of the interior of the warehouse aside from the overwhelming scent of smell? Of spices. Yep, you can roll a perception check. Uh, Bardicky, uh, you can also roll a perception check. Yes. So, I assume you're uh, still hiding in your bush? Yeah, I'm keeping watch for him. Uh, sorry, give me a second. Just have to pull it back up. Okay. Uh, perception. Oh, no, Dylan, no. I'm, not, I'm not being good on watch, boyo. <laughs> okay, you are definitely preoccupied with where they're going to come from the left, they're going to come from the right, you don't notice. And then a guard comes around the corner um, and just sort of appears into your line of sight. He's like 20 feet away from the door that nulls inside. Okay. Did the guard walk past me? Uh, yes. Can I follow You're just, the guard just casually, not like trying yep. to sneak around? Are, are you just casually walking up and down the street? Yeah, I was just walking down the street to, like, you know, not be uh, involved in the crime. And then I saw the dude ramp. Is he running? Probably. No, he's just walking briskly. Oh, he's walking briskly. And I just turn down. As he turns down, I'm following him. Does he say anything to me? Okay. Uh, he is completely oblivious to you, and he walks down to the end of the alley. Do uh, I see anything on the interior with a 23? No, there are no windows in the building, so you can't tell anything from the inside. I have, I have dark vision. Oh, no, I meant I, I meant for the guard. You see that this is oh, a spice warehouse. Oh, no, I'm warehouse. just looking like... Yeah. No, this is a spice like, warehouse. There's out of the ordinary. No, there's... Do we have our characters on this, by the way? Okay. I can I can grab your characters. Hang on a sec. I, I was curious if it was... You can drag your own characters, like... I have no idea where they're at right now. In the journal, <laughs> where they always are. Oh, I can just redrag them from there. Yeah, you, you can drag like uh, ten of your characters on if you wanted to. Um, John, real quick, does gunpowder exist? 
Yes, uh, black powder does exist, and uh, okay. I'm it's a, very, a, very uncommon. Like you're more likely to come across uh, like a five thousand gold piece diamond than you are to come across gunpowder. But you can go to a temple would, of Gond and buy some if you want it. Would people like recognize the smell of it or no? I would say people who are who haven't haven't experienced it, which would be ninety plus percent of the population, would just think that it's some kind of weird fire. Like the smell, it just smells like charcoal and gunpowder. All right, what, what's a flammable substance that everybody would recognize in this time? Um, any kind of oil, wood. Oh, that would have like a recognizable odor. Uh, cedar has a kind of pungent odor. Oh, then no, I mean like explosive kind of there, dangerous. Yeah, there aren't very many things that are explosive other than uh, stacks black powder. stacks of manure. Yeah, well, actually. Flower particles, very very flammable. Yes, they are. If you want to light a match in there and start an explosion, you can do that. <laughs> That's all right. Well, That's all right. There there are tons <laughs> of things that are actually incredibly explosive and flammable. That just I don't think that's what he's looking for. What are I you did, What I, are you looking for? And I'll tell you if I have that. I, I have I have this cantrip or stigmatization, which I can do. I can do like three instances of it, and I can use that to create like a sensory effect. So I could do it to create like. Like of the look of flames, and so I was gonna see if I could create the smell of like an explosive, and then like flames at the door and at the edges, and then a minor illusion for someone to yell like, "Oh God, fire!" Oh yeah, if you want to make it look like there's a fire burning in the warehouse, that's fine. Okay, so I'm gonna put like uh, prestigidation to create flames in multiple st spots in the back side of the warehouse to make it look like it's up in flames, and then the cantrip minor illusion. Uh, for someone on the other side of the alley so he can't actually see the person if it was there to yell like, oh god, fire, it's going to explode. Okay. Um, he comes around the uh, the corner and sees the fire and he uh, panics and runs towards the river. <laughs> also, with that 23 perception... Did I get any sort of uh, general idea of that alarm system that uh, supposedly exists? Some I'm, sort of like magical device? It like, is, it is a door? spell. I don't know how it works in 5th edition, but in 3.5 it's just a warding spell. Alarm? Yeah. Okay. Uh, and then I'm going to do one last minor illusion to make a voice at the door of the warehouse. So it's kind of quietly talking into Null now that the guard's a little bit farther away, saying, <laughs> Null, get out now, there's a guard. Okay, I'm gonna run to the front door. Well, there's windows too. No, there are no. No, he windows. said there are no windows. Oh, there were windows. My bad. I thought it was no. awesome. I'm gonna run to the front door. Okay. The. Uh, I'm, assuming, I'm assuming you saw my flame tricks on the backside. Okay. Uh, the front door is also locked. Well, I mean, isn't it unlockable from the inside? If you have the key to unlock it, yep. Oh, it's not like a deadbolt or anything like that. Not for about six to eight hundred more years. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> but keys are more fucking te technologically advanced. What the fuck? Yeah, but a key, you can put a key in from either side, which once you right. make the keyhole, that doesn't require any more work. Right. Okay, uh, I'm going to attempt to pick that lock real quick. Deftly. Okay. Is it on the front side of the building? Yeah. Holy shit, good roll, Dill. <laughs> okay, you pop the lock on the front. And I'm going to just open the door a little bit. I'm assuming the alarm's going to go off. That's fine. And I'm going to peek out. Like, just see if there's anybody, like, right outside the door or not. Uh, there are people all around at this point. Well, Dill, did you see my fire on the back side? No, I was inside. Well, but I put it, like, inside the doorway and along the edges of it. Yeah, the door looks like it's on fire, so you definitely want to go that way in a room filled with flower dust. No, I'm just saying he could run out like, oh god, fire, and use that as a distraction. What are you doing, Dylan? Hmm. So, like, um, it just looks like commoners on the, like outside that are that are outside. Yeah, there's just people in the street gathering from all the racket from the alarm. Um, Bardiki, you can roll a perception check. All right. I got to go in like 10-ish minutes. doesn't have to be exactly 10, but 
I gotta go around six. Oh, okay. I didn't realize we were ending so early. Yeah. I win. Me neither. No, that, that's cool. I don't care how long we play for. I just didn't realize we were going that short. We didn't even get to the adventure hook for this uh, no. session. But that's fine. Um... I was actually going to put it in as we were, as you guys were in the constable's office, and then you got all excited about going and doing something else. And I was like, okay, well, we'll just wait on it. <laughs> um, okay, so I'm gonna, I'm gonna burst out of the door and like pretend to be coughing, and but I have a hood, like as a criminal background, like I kind of have like dark holes, and like I have a hood, and I'm gonna have my hood up, and I'm gonna be like pretend like I'm coughing and like smoking like smoke away from my face. And you're going out the front door. Yeah. Okay. And then trying, I'm just gonna like trying keep to going. be inconspicuous while you're doing this. Yeah, or? yeah. I'm be like coughing to myself, keep my head down, and just like start saying like water, water, or whatever. Like I need to. Well, you can either water. be inconspicuous or you can be obvious. You can't be both. Well, I'm gonna be well, like inconspicuous as I can be, okay. barging out of the front door with people watching. Okay. Roll a stealth check. <laughs> <laughs> nice. You uh, people don't even see you. Yeah, you come out the front door, and you like keep your head down, and you just sort of move along the edge of the building, and no one even seems to notice you. They seem so <laughs> totally preoccupied with everything else that's happening on the street. You are a phenomenally sneaky little prick. If you want to give me like thirty minutes, we don't have to end at six. I just need like thirty minutes. So what do you got to do? Guys. We can take a breather go. and go yeah. come back in a half hour. That's not a big deal. Yeah, that's fine. I'm cool with that. Yeah, How fine. late are we going to play after that? Uh, doesn't bother me none. I mean, I I, assume, I, I feel I feel like if we get to the hook and like get to the point like where we can like really start the adventure for next session, then like that'd be fine with me. I just wanted a time scale. So if we stop at uh, well, he said six. Um, and then uh, well, pick up at six thirty. Well, we've, oh, been yeah. go we've been going for four hours, almost four hours now. And what, what's the average session time that you like to do? I don't like to go above eight hours because my ass cramps sitting in this chair all day. But oh, uh, we're definitely yeah, not going eight hours. <laughs> yeah, so whatever, whatever works for you guys. I play with hardcore guys that give me shit if we call it before eight hours. Like one of my players right. doesn't like playing the evil game because. One of the other players can only play for four hours, and he doesn't even think it's worth coming out to a session for four hours. Right. He's like, if we so, can I play mean, any other game, we'll play that game, but if no one's available, then we'll play the evil game. Uh, I'm down to go for another two to three hour, hours after the half an hour break. Yeah. yeah. Similar. Everyone good with that? Mm hmm Okay, cool. Man. Yeah, a half hour break would be great for me. I can get up and stretch and whatnot. Yeah. Okay, yeah, so, yeah, yeah. uh, no, you disappear door. into the crowd as the faceless, uh, unknown man. Um, oh, wow, is that a fire? <laughs> uh, Bardicky, the, uh, the guard, uh, comes running back towards you. He's grabbed a couple of, uh, pails of water from the river and, uh, is coming back to put up the fire. Okay. Uh, offer to help. I'm I'm just gonna stay hidden. Uh, oh, I rolled an 18 on that perception. Was there anything for there, or was it just to see the guard? No, that was just you're looking at the door, trying to get Null's attention while he comes up behind you. Gotcha, gotcha. Um, yeah, no, I'm, I'm gonna stay hidden, and then when he pours a single bucket, I'm gonna make all the fire disappear. Okay. He throws the bucket like he thinks he's gonna put out the whole fire, and then he bends down to pick up the other one. And toss it, and uh, turns around, and the fire's gone, and he just throws the other one on for good measure, and then um, approaches the door. I wonder, nods. A, I wonder if he has a good sense of accomplishment. Uh, he nods to himself. He's like, like, quiet. Yeah. Like, yeah, man, I'll fuck it good. <laughs> Put out the fire check. Rolls a 20. I'm in for a fucking pay raise. All right. I'm going to have a shit ton of fun with all this illusion bullshit. Yeah, I fucking hate illusions. <laughs> it's so hard to adjudicate. It's so hard to determine whether or not something makes sense. And I keep getting fucking illusionists in my groups because they always <laughs> want to do something stupid. I had a gnomish illusionist. Was that stupid? No, that was amazing. <laughs> I'm not. It's not that. It's just it's not something that 
because it doesn't fall into the matrix of the game mechanically, I can't predict what you're going to do. So when you were asking what you want, what you could do, I was like, I don't even know what you're trying to ask. I want to make it look like it's on fire. Well, okay, it's on fire then. When I hit level well, three, I, I, I want to have the illusion magic. No, you're not, because I'm not going to let you live to level three. <laughs> okay. Uh, don't worry though. I, my my I don't. I'll never try to do like dorky illusions. They'll just be like. No, I thought that was amazing. I had an, uh, the gnomish illusionist. He got uh, to cast. Silent Image, which is the same spell at first level, but he got to cast it as a cantrip, as his gnomish ability, mm -hmm. and he would cast it constantly. He would create darkness with it by making people think that they can't see anything, and he would create, he used to create a wraith, and it, he would have an attack and use it to flank because it's insubstantial, so even when they hit it, they just think that their weapon went right through it. That's clever as hell. And yeah, and he would make it react like it's being hit, and it was like, yeah, this this stupid illusion was giving them so much tactical advantage in combat. He started complaining when it when monsters wouldn't attack it. They'd only attack it once, realize they couldn't hurt it, and then go back to attacking the players. Like, oh, but this thing's really nasty. I was like, well, it's not doing any damage. So at the moment, it just seems like a threat, not as a significant threat. The axe yeah. in his back makes him think that that's going to hurt a lot more. Well, don't worry. My silent image is a spell slot, so not a cantrip. <laughs> Well, it was a spell slot for him as well, but he had, I think he had a 20 intelligence, so he got five bonus uh, cantrips for it, so he could do it oh, every damn. combat. Yeah, the, you oh, get, right, because you guys are doing 3-5. Three, yeah, 3-5, three, you, you get a lot more bonus stuff. You don't get the free infinite spells the way you do in 5th edition, but the actual cantrips themselves are far more effective in combat because they're swift actions. But on that note, um, the guard uh, puts out the fire, and then he carefully, uh, he draws his sword and carefully pushes the door open with the tip of it and goes inside. Once he walks in, I'm just going to head back to the main street through the alley. Okay. When you get back out to the alley, you can see there's a crowd of people, probably a hundred people now, uh, around this building just trying to see what what is happening. I'll just hide into the crowd become an onlooker i'm uh i'm gonna take you know while i'm, while I'm in this crowd i'm gonna take a quick look around see if i you know, might see any uh precariously dangling pouches uh you can definitely roll a check on that well i, I rolled a 16 to spot any okay you can definitely see some precarious pouches of these distracted people can I, you know, you know roll um, a of hand? You want to roll a, assuming you want to pick your target, uh, roll a an intelligence check. Uh, well, can I also just have a perception to see if I see any of my comrades around? Yep, you can see uh, whoever is obviously available. I think uh, yeah. Steve mm -hmm. is just wandering up and down the street trying to be inconspicuously <laughs> obvious. Oh, right. oh, I actually want to look for Dylan to see if he got out. Out of character. Um, is there a reason for intelligence over sleight of hand, or...? Intelligence to determine who you're going to pickpocket. Oh, I just... I, I don't really care. I would probably oh, just okay. go for, like, the... the not... I, I don't overstep my bounds. So like, I'm sure there's, like, a large coin pouch and, like, really small ones. I'd probably go for, like, the in-between. Okay, I was just going to see if there was someone in the crowd that you specifically wanted to get, but if you just want to walk up to the closest guy who looks like an easy mark, that's fine with me. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, I'm going gonna, gonna to leave now, just so I can try and be back. I have to go get food and stuff, and then come back. Okay, just send okay, me a message on Discord when you get back. Um, we'll, we'll wrap up, and we'll be back at uh, what would be 6.30, I guess. Yep, sounds good. Bye. So uh, I'm looking for Noel to see if he got out. Okay. Uh, Noel, you want to roll your stealth? You want me to keep 24 or re-roll stealth? Re-roll your stealth. <laughs> okay, okay, just keep the 24. Okay, um, okay. Bardicky, you cannot find him in the crowd. Okay. I was going to see if I could help you with a pickpocket, but if I don't know you're there, then it's fine. Okay, um, you're a sleight of hand. You uh, get an opposed perception on that. Oh, wow. Okay. Um, you managed to uh, grab someone's purse, but they uh, turn around when you do it. And uh, you can roll another stealth check. 
Assuming you want to try and disappear into the crowd? Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh! Uh, the guy's <laughs> like, hey, he took my purse! And he starts chasing you through the crowd. I'll book it. Do I hear that? Uh, yes, gonna, that, like, it suddenly becomes a, a much bigger commotion, although you miss it completely. I'm gonna, like, since you said there's a hundred people, right? Yep. Yeah, so I'm I'm gonna, like, I'm a pretty slender guy. <laughs> so I'm gonna try, like, ditch him in the crowd. Okay, you can roll a deck save. Okay, you uh, wiggle your way through a tight crowd of people, and by the time you get out the other side, you can make another uh, stealth check. And I, I mentioned, I mentioned when I walked left the warehouse that I put up my hood too. By the way. Yep. I assume when you're stealing, you're concealing yourself as best as possible. Okay. <laughs> yeah. He he burst through the crowd and he is scanning like he's literally looking right at you, trying to find you in the crowd. And he's like, just scanning, looking for some sign of which way you went. <laughs> yeah, well, it's, it's like inconspicuous. <laughs> Oh wow, is that a fire? <laughs> <laughs> oh, it used to be put out. Oh, perfect. Oh, great. Oh, we're all saved. Okay, you managed to steal three silver pieces. Perfect. Nice. Too. Paid for my. Paid for my night. Actually, I didn't pay for that, anyways. That's true. Owen did. I took yeah. the money out. Yeah. Put that oh. back in. Owen's the money back. You bags. paid for your spirits that you bought. No, I, I paid for the spirits. Yeah, I, yeah, I already so did you that. Got that back. Yeah. Minus your tip, but. Okay, yeah. I need to go to the bathroom, so I'm gonna bail, and I'll see you guys back sure. in a half hour. Sounds good. Sure. I'm gonna go to the bathroom as well. <laughs> Tino. Oh my god. Dude. I'm excited uh, for all these illusion bullshit. I don't even know what the fuck's happening. So, I guess it appears that then the warehouse is just an alleyway. Maybe there's something underground, but... Eh. Well, so I mean, there was the two alleyways and then the warehouse in between, and she got killed on that wall, but I mean, there's still the wall to the right in the whatever building that could be. And then, yeah, the underground, like maybe they have causeways or something. Go in the sewer. Yeah, it'd probably be a fair next bet. But if he was going to sacrifice something, I figured he'd probably do it in the sewer. If he was trying to conceal it. Or maybe he wants to do it under the, like, I don't want to say oh, light yeah. of the new moon. Yeah, but... maybe it has to be under the light of the new moon. Well, new moon is not... Well, you know, I mean, you know what I mean. There's no, no moon, but yeah, like he has to do it under the light of the sky or something. Yeah. I don't know. There's, there's a couple possibilities. But yeah, the warehouse definitely seems like it's clean. Oh my god, I'm I'm excited, for, especially if we're in the sewer. Like when someone has like a torch or something, and they're walking around just to do the prestigidation and put the torch out. And then you dim light boys just go and gank them. Remind me not to pickpocket until I'm level three. Oh well, Dylan. Uh, I it didn't. I, I was trying to see if I could make it work. It didn't work out this time. But if you and I are working together on a pickpocket, like I can like produce sound and shit to like, so I can like make them look like the wrong way and like have distractions, and so you can get an advantage on pickpocketing them. When I'm when I'm level three, it won't even matter because my mage hand can go invisible, and I can literally like it says in like the in the mage hand ledger man, it says you can pickpocket with it. So, do you I only can get pick to do that once a day, day or? No, dude, it's a cantrip. That's insane. Yeah. So I can take pocket we... with it, and then there's no way like they can relate me to the crime because like it's an invisible mage hand. If there is, an, like if, for future reference, if there's if we're ever doing a check and I'm with you guys, you should just I'm casting guidance on. You. Well, we can't do that for the illegal stuff, but no, we can do it on the <laughs> other things for sure. Because it's it's a cantrip and just a D4 on any ability check. It's not bad. I'm excited to like. Also, if we come across like enemies and they're like sitting there casually, just like use minor illusion to make it sound like one of them's like talking shit about the other and like 
cause panic and mayhem. I'm excited to sneak into a goblin camp and poison the food. And then they'll die. We're gonna be sneaky bitches, Dylan. Oh yeah. For the god of hell, I'm really averse to undead. Yeah. And I'm compelled to kill the undead rather than to use a uh, turn undead to make a run away. Well, you can eventually... Your turn undead eventually does kill them, doesn't yeah. that? Or is that paladin? Yeah, CR one half. Yeah. And that goes up as you level up. Yep. I guess at level five? Now, like, if you you remember the the room we got stuck in in the the test campaign, where it was like a completely closed room. Yeah. If, if you were at the mouth of the doorway, so you know they actually like couldn't run away, would would your personality let you do it because it just makes them easier to kill? I uh, I can use it. It's like I'm I'm compelled to do it, but if I if I'm about to die or if it's to like get them off my back while I kill an even bigger undead or something like that, like that'll work. Yeah. Nice. If I if I use it as a tactical thing, then it, my my god's like, yeah, dude, makes sense. But if I'm using it just to not deal with undead, no, I have to kill him. Gotcha. Well, do you guys want to do some Fortnite? Yeah, I can move around Fortnite. Sure. Since Mark fucking choked on us last night. What? what happened? Like, idiot. Oh yeah. <laughs> I died in a 1v1 against the guy with the fucking rocket I was, launcher. I, I was waiting for the boat, Corby, mm -hmm. and we got in the game, and literally, there's one guy left. And then they came and knocked on my door to get on the boat, to put my truck on the boat. So. So you just had to stop. Yeah, I, like, I had to, like, I had to drive my truck on the ferry. I was I was too aggressive. Do you do you just never drive on the weekends, or do you sometimes do? I try not to. Like I just try to work the week and then get the weekends off. But so, like today, I was dri I was driving earlier today because like I I can only drive thirteen hours a day, and then I had to go across the ferry, and the ferry only goes across at at noon and midnight, so I had to wait. I had to wait for the ferry till midnight, and then ferry takes seven hours, so I got off the boat at about 7.30 this morning, drove for six and a half hours to get home, and I'm home. Nice. So do you, is there like a place along the way where you like drop the truck off and you just have your personal car? No, I, I bring the truck home. Well, I bring it close to home. Like it won't fit in my driveway, so I park it up at a, at a truck and trailer spot. And then I got a taxi home. The taxi's only five bucks, so. Is it like a full-on 18 wheeler, or is it more like a Big Mac truck? No, it's an 18. Well, it like, I like I drive like a class one like truck and trailer. Okay. But right now I don't have a trailer on. Because uh, we decked it on another trailer. So basically, like when you go across the ferry, they charge you for length, not for weight or anything like that. Because like the more room you take up on the boat, then the more you got to pay. Mm -hmm. So what we do when um, there's more than one truck going across is. Uh, we put a trailer on top of the other trailer and then one truck takes both trailers like with one on trailer on top of the other and the oh. other truck comes back with no trailer so it's oh, cheaper then, then afterwards you just split the trailers back up yeah well he he took it to a different spot and i went home and i got a trailer waiting for me in moncton that i got picked up on monday do you like the job Meh. no do you like it more than the oil rig job you had yeah, I, I hated the oil rigs, dude. It's terrible. Yeah, I mean, I remember when we used to talk about it, you fucking hated it. But I, I don't like this much either, but I mean, it's easy ish, I guess. Dude, I, don't how many a, years, I don't make a whole lot of money. How many years have you been around with us now? It's been like, I don't five, know, like right? five. How old are you now? I am 23. I turned 24 in about a month. That's right. Maybe when you're 18. It's weird to think about. Aren't you the same age as me? Hello? You're 23? Yeah. I'm 21. Oh. Oh, yeah, that's right. You're a young boy. <laughs> yeah, I'll be 22 this year, but... So, I think there's, like, two years and, like, a couple months between us. Yeah. So, yeah, you're a millennial. I am. I'm right at the Generation Z cutoff.
Fucking I'm 19. So yeah, Johnny, are you, are you, you're not 19, Mark, are you? I am 19. I thought you were 20. 20 in a couple months. I met you when you were 14. Oh, you, what the fuck? <laughs> yeah. Tina was 14. I mean, Tina's actually like vocally has sound the same this entire time. I actually no. think he has. Yes, you have. No, what? I was fucking high as fuck. Not so much on the mic though. Like you, you gone like a little bit deeper, but not much. And I think I've pretty you know much what? sounded the same too. I, I left for like a year and a bit. So like that whole year, you probably went through puberty. <laughs> I, I didn't realize you so starkly. I sound so different. I don't think you do, man. It's I, I'm updating, by the way. So I never yeah, wanted to speak, halfway done. I never so, wanted to speak in Gary's mod because I had the highest voice. Hey guys, it's me, Mark. No, oh, dude, Siegel used to be way higher than you. No. On the mic, yeah. No way, dude. Chat, dude. I remember it. Yeah, I never met you guys from Gary Mod. I, I met Dan, and then I met you guys through Dan. Well, that's that's uh, that's when we well, you basically met us because Gary's Mod's actually like six, seven years ago, and so that's back when like Ace was a thing, and I founded Mojo with Ace, and that's how I met Tino, Fish, Royst, and Siegel, and Mason. Um, I assume this is all non-game related. Oh. Uh, Oh yeah, we're just we're just shooting the shit. You're welcome to sit in on it, though, and shoot the shit with us. No, that that's cool. I just thought I heard you guys talking because I didn't disconnect the headset, and I came back over to see if you guys were like talking about stuff and it would be of uh, interest or significance to the game. But uh, I don't no, have a problem sitting around either. shooting shit either. I just thought you guys were like trying to figure stuff out or. No, no, we're we're in full on break mode. Um, and that's when I don't know if you've even heard the story about it, Dylan. But that's when the whole drama with Ace started, where like his girlfriend supposedly got pregnant, but she actually wasn't pregnant, and she just said that to make Ace not leave her. Oh yeah. And then I, so I never, I never met that trick. dude. Yeah, so we we started cracking jokes about it, and Ace got real mad. And one of the other things that was weird about it is basically Ace had like had the, his computer, and all the servers and stuff were hosted on his computer because I didn't have a computer of the uh, like quality at that time. The yeah. He and I both worked in service and serviced the servers. And uh, his dad, when this came to light that his girlfriend might be pregnant, even though it was a total lie, like grabbed a hatchet and like took his computer outside and like beat it to <laughs> shit. Oh my god, dude! Because <laughs> because Ace I think was sixteen at the time, and so his dad. Probably... Oh, it was just a punishment for knocking her up. excuse that like she went to a doctor but like didn't tell ace about it um and it was like a doctor out of state and that like she just had to like assist that like made the pregnancy tests come back positive was the whole story behind that anyways though so ace disappeared for three months so and like of course the servers and shit were physically on the fucking computer so they were gone and he came back and was super pissy that the servers never got worked on and we were like what are you talking about dude like they're gone and then he ended up kind of like kicking us from like the team speak, and that's when we all went to Tino's and started playing League instead. And that's when you came into the picture, maybe like a month later. Oh yeah, fresh out of the drama boat. Sure, yeah, dude. Bunch of kids. It's weird to think about. Yeah, some of the jokes are pretty funny though. Oh, the ones about Ace. Yeah. Oh, they were bad, dude. I was an asshole. I felt no pity for him. I was like, well, he's one of the really, really bad ones, and maybe John will stop being our DM after hearing it. We'll see. Uh, I was like, well, Ace, you can hope they have a daughter, and then you can knock her up, too. <laughs> Sorry, what was that? <laughs> you guys have to go a long ways to offend me. In my, okay. in my spy game, the guys wanted to play evil characters, and they made, like, they were... Um, like forced uh, agents for their uh, country, and serial they went rapists. on. Well, they weren't serial rapists, but uh, one of the missions <laughs> they went on, they were supposed to go into this elven uh, hamlet and stir up shit, like kill as many people as possible. And they were very successful. The three-man team at like third level, like fucked this village up of like two hundred people. <laughs> but um, they went into one area and it was a family with lots of kids and they'd already murdered the uh uh whatchamacallit the parents 
And uh, Jameson decides that he's going to pick up one baby by the ankles and use it to club the other children to death. <laughs> Beautiful. A solid play. John, do you play Fortnite? Uh, no. Shame. John doesn't play video games, brother. I'm just checking. I'm going to invite him since he he's plays here. plays RuneScape 3 all day, every day. That's a video game, Dylan. I'm pretty fucking sure. It's not a fucking video game. <laughs> Hello? <laughs> It's uh, it's an MMO, but yeah, it's not. It's it can be video game ish if you're like into raids and uh, doing bossing and stuff. But I don't really do that. Gotcha. What do you do? Like I, I don't I think most... I've ever seen not on RuneScape if you're not. Yeah, that's because a you just, like, have it on background. Yeah, a if you have the RuneScape window open, which is one of the first things I do in the morning to check all my stats, um, it says on discord you're on runescape like even when i have no internet it'll still say i'm on discord on runescape on discord right. because i have the window open um right. and i turn it off when i go to bed but for the most part uh mm. i do a couple of things during the day and i generally just leave it on afk like i'm already maxed and everything and i have enough uh xp to max like four times so but i'm my clan leader and i've been playing for i don't know 2018 for 13 years so same character the whole time shit son the other joke i threw at ace and this one got me banned from the team speak was uh i think it was something along the lines that like forced forced the, the abortion out of it and then he's got a nice afternoon snack oh god <laughs> that that is truly foul I I, no, I would definitely, if you you were saying something like that about me, I would probably take offense to that. But uh, yeah, you're a horrible person. Fair, yeah, dude. Oh hey, free backpack in the store. Yeah, yeah. brother. All right, let's get this game in and win. I cannot believe how much time you guys have spent doing sidetrack stuff. Like I can't believe it either, honestly. <laughs> like I, I've had a ball. Like this has been an awesome session. I just can't believe we haven't even gotten to the story hook yet. I was. I, I'm pretty bad about it. I have a lot of fun with it. So no, I, I, I think it's great. Into it. When uh, when we, when I first start out, like it's really hard to get into like a character identity from the get go, right? You kind of you kind of got like a form it. Like you can have your backstory as much as you want. We still got to form it, and. Uh, I I also know nothing about your world, so I don't really really too sure on like where to where to go. You know what I mean? Like what like who to talk to, what to get. I mean, you got your like your normal like tavern owners and like the constable office for, like a like a bounty or something like that, but Yep. No, if you guys have any in game questions that are mechanical, just say it. Just say, Hey, can you tell me this answer and I'll I'll give you the answer. I don't have any problems with well, statistics. So my 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 thought about it was um, like I was having fun doing what we're doing. So I was 